back. Well, according to a recent study by KPMG in the University of Melbourne, Canada ranks as one of the last countries in the world when it comes to AI literacy. So with artificial intelligence becoming the most important skill, understanding it, using it for future employment, uh, there's an urgent need for an education strategy right now in Canada. Our next guest seeks to tackle that strategy with her new AI Ready project. So here to tell us more is Jennifer Flanagan, the CEO of Actua, a youth organization specializing in STEM education. Jennifer, thanks for being here. I'm happy to be back. Yeah. Okay. Let's start at the beginning. Yes. Let's start with the basics. What do you mean when you say AI literacy? So with AI literacy, we don't just mean being able to use a tool like ChatGPT, which all of us are using. Uh, when people um, think about youth using it, they assume that because they're using AI, that they understand how it works. But we went across the country, we surveyed youth, 72% of them actually believe they know how to use it effectively and responsibly, but only 38% of their educators agree. So that gap is like a concern. With AI literacy, we go beyond just using it to understanding how it works, to spotting bias, privacy concerns. We want them using it safely and responsibly. Okay, Okay. so in what ways are kids not using AI effectively right now? So over 90% of Canadian youth use AI every day. Wow. And the vast majority of them are learning how to do that on social media. So you can imagine that Without proper guidance, they're gonna get it wrong sometimes. So I'll give you an example. Many of them are using Snapchat. Snapchat has a little AI bot that you can ask questions to. So if a youth can't yet discern fact from fiction, they might get misinformation. But if you imagine a teenager with an eating disorder asking health information, they could have a really negative impact. Yeah. So we kind of balance that with the very real fact that AI skills are going to underpin our economy. No economy in the world is gonna be able to compete without an AI literate society. So it is the need for an AI education strategy is urgent now because we wanna keep them safe, but we also want them to lead in this AI revolution, Ooh, right? Yeah. So, and if we don't do it, the longer we wait, the more vulnerable they're gonna to be to things like misinformation and misuse. Oh my gosh, I feel like we're walking a tightrope right now with that. Yes. So there's a recent study from MIT and it reported that AI use results in decreased brain activity mm -hmm. because we're not generating any answers on our own using our own brain. So then how do you go about using or teaching the use of AI in schools? So that study raised a really important point and it's the how we teach AI that's very important. So you can imagine if a, if a student uses AI to avoid thinking or avoid doing the work, then their learning is going to suffer. But if we teach them to use it as a tool to enhance what they're doing, then their learning can, can increase. So example, a youth, classic example, they use it to generate an essay. They submit it as their own work. They have not learned anything. But if we teach them to actually upload a draft, to brainstorm with the AI, to get feedback from it, then their learning can deepen. Likewise, they upload their class notes, say for, from a semester, and they get it to generate a mock exam, right? So their learning can deepen. We are at an absolutely critical crossroads in AI education where, yes, the AI could be used to shortcut Learning, we don't want that. That is why we are pushing so hard to have good programs that teach them how to use it well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would you say that, I mean, I would assume this would vary depending on the age of the student. So absolutely varies by age, but it's just, it's non-negotiable. So in elementary school, we want to introduce the topic of AI. We want to talk about misinformation. We want them to experiment with the technology in a safe way. When we get into middle school and high school, that's when we want to teach them to use it as a tool. And that's where we have to get teachers setting the, setting the parameters of use, talking to them about how they're using it. And then when we get into university, I mean, we're playing catch up here, but most university policies are around disclosing when you are using AI, which is kind of what we expect in the workplace. Mm. Okay, so there was a Toronto Star and Wall Street Journal uh, and in articles, they both reported this. Uh, a lot of schools are looking to actually decide to ban AI completely in the classroom because they're finding just to, students are outright using it to cheat. Mm -hmm. As you just mentioned, you know, submit a full essay mm -hmm. that they had nothing to do with truly. But you actually say that banning is not really the way. Why mm -hmm. not? Well, it's too late to ban it. Um, but uh, we can actually teach kids the difference and we have to do that overtly. Teach them the difference between using AI to enhance something and using AI 
AI to cheat, right? So we need to work with teachers so that they are evaluating differently, that they're setting up their classes differently. They're asking the students, how are you using it? How, how did you push back against the AI? So the learning is different, but it's still very meaningful. Okay. Okay, so talk about how parents and, and educators can mm. manage this risk. So we need to, as parents and teachers, we need to be looking for too many shortcuts. So if you're child in grade three comes to you with a paper that looks like it's been written by a university student, like chances <laughs> are, that's happening, that's happened in my house, um, chances are they're, they're relying too much on the AI. So as parents, we need to talk to kids about how they're using AI at school, how they're using it at home, try to be constructive and not critical, which is hard uh, as a parent, but we don't wanna assume that they have this all figured out. And my biggest advice to parents and teachers is that they need, they don't need to be experts in this technology. I, we're not, many of us aren't experts. Experts. You don't need to be an expert, you need to experiment. So you can keep those lines of communication open. And if you have a child going back to school this September, push to make sure the school has a policy or some guidelines around AI use, because we don't, we don't want to leave it up to chance. Mm. For sure. Okay, so you briefly touched upon this earlier. Um, AI has been found to generate some answers and things that are like totally made up. Mm -hmm. And they call these hallucinations, when your AI is hallucinating. So how do we then how do we teach kids to understand, well, how do you understand or spot a hallucination? Mm -hmm. What is fact? What is fiction? How do we teach that? Well, we have to continue to teach critical thinking skills. That's at the top of the list of skills that kids need, is critically looking at information. Where did it come from? Can they trust it? Can they confirm it? So we can teach them that while we give them examples of misinformation. So a great example this summer, the Chicago Sun just came out with a list of books for the summer. Uh, recommended we books. Yeah, yes. on the show. Okay, and, and after it was published, they found that half of those books were in fact made up, didn't, didn't exist. So the journalist had, had used AI to create the list, didn't fact check, and then it was published. So great way to explain to your kids both what happens, you know, when, when you don't fact check, but also how easy it is to take the output put it into Google, and confirm that you can find the information somewhere yes. else. Yes. Okay, so just really quickly, yes. in what ways do you think that AI can transform education? Okay, so it's a game changer for teachers at giving their time back. So they can use it to help them with things like quizzes and lesson plans and you know grading things, the things that take them away from providing that one-on-one -on -one attention to kids that need it most. It's also an amazing tool for personalized learning. So imagine a teacher prompting AI with, I have a, a visual learner with ADHD and I want a lesson plan on X. So it's a great way to make classrooms more inclusive and again, to give teachers some of their time back. Great. We love that. Jennifer, thank you so much for this. Got a lot of teachers here, yes. a lot of teachers watching, a lot of parents wondering. So, you know, maybe summer with AI and the kids. Yeah. This yeah. is, the, you know, let's, <laughs> let's learn together. Jennifer, thank you so much. Great, great information. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we'll be back right after this. Hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below, and don't miss out.